Yesterday, we introduced our final concept of the unit in preparation for our test on Monday. That concept was conservation of energy, the law of conservation of mechanical energy. And it basically said that energy can't be created or it can't be destroyed. It can be transformed from one kind to another, so you can change it from kinetic to potential, but you can't create it and you can't destroy it. The total amount of energy that you start with will always be equal, always be equal to the total amount of energy that you end with. That is, as long as you account for all the types of energy. Now, sometimes it looks like we gain energy. If there's a wind and something speeds up as a result of that wind, it looks like the car has gained energy. Right? It's moving faster than it was before. But it didn't really gain energy. I mean, the car did, but the system didn't. The total amount of energy remained the same. If we accounted for the wind, the kinetic energy in the wind, and the kinetic energy in the car, the total amount of energy would have remained the same there. Sometimes it looks like we lose energy. Maybe a car slows down because of a wind or because of the braking system. Well, we haven't destroyed energy. We've just converted it to another form, typically in the form of thermal energy, maybe a little bit of sound energy in there as well. So the total amount of energy, if we account for everything, will remain the same. And that means the initial energy will equal the final energy if we account for everything. Now, we've learned about three kinds of energy that can be present for the initial energy and the final energy. We've got kinetic energy, we've got gravitational potential energy, and we've got elastic or spring potential energy. Whenever you're solving one of these problems, there is uh, three questions you've got to ask yourself for both the initial and the final energy. So you get over here, you're looking at EI, ask yourself three questions. Okay, one of those three questions is what, Atlanta? Is there a height? Okay. If there's a height, okay, what's the significance of that, Atlanta, if there's a height? What does it mean if there's a height? What kind of energy is present? Good, gravitational potential energy. So if there's a height, we're going to sub in MGH for EI. If there's not, then don't sub in MGH. Okay, what's the second question you ask yourself, Aiden? Good, is it moving? If it's moving, what do you do? Right, then you've got kinetic energy if it's moving. So we're going to sub in 1 half mv squared. What's the third question you ask yourself? Is there a spring or an elastic or something like a spring or an elastic, bumper car bumpers, whatever, that's like a spring or an elastic that's compressed or stretched? If there is, Lewis, then what do you got? Good. Then we're going to sub in 1 half kx squared. It's very rare that you'd have all three types of energy for EI. It's possible, but it's very, very rare. Typically, it's going to be one of the three or two of the three, as opposed to all three of them. Basically, though, the general form of the equation would look like this. MGH plus 1 half MV squared plus 1 half KX squared. If you don't have elastic potential, then you'll just scratch that part of it out. If you don't have kinetic, then you'll just scratch that part of it out. So it's going to be one or more of these three types of energy in your initial energy. Now, your final energy, you're going to ask yourself the same three questions. So it could conceivably have all three types of energy as well. But in all likelihood, it's only going to be one or two of those types of energy. Maybe kinetic and gravitational potential. Maybe uh, elastic potential, just elastic potential. Maybe just kinetic. Maybe just gravitational potential. It's typically not going to be all three kinds of energy. All right. We had uh, five questions on our worksheet. We've gone over a little bit of that already. What I want to do is, uh, is take a look at uh, a couple of those questions here. Okay, I'd like to take a look at, uh, actually, we'll take a look at three of them here. I think we'll get three, four, and five on that worksheet. Number three, number three on your conservation of energy worksheet says, a 2.5 kilogram rock is thrown, is dropped straight down. Okay, we changed it from thrown to dropped. Okay, it's dropped straight down from the top of a building. How fast is it moving when it's fallen 10 meters, and how much time has elapsed? We got our mass in question number three of 2.50 kilograms. Um, VI is zero because it starts at rest, right? It's dropped. VF is what we're looking for. How fast is it moving when it's fallen 10 meters? What else do we have there? What are we going to plug that 10 meters in as? What are we going to call that? Jacob? Sorry? 
let's call it the initial height, right? Now, has it fallen and hit the ground? We don't know. It's fallen 10 meters. Where's the ground? We're not told where the ground is. But remember with potential energy, we can define the ground as wherever we want. So we're going to define the ground here. We're going to define the ground here as after it's fallen 10 meters, okay? whether it's actually on the ground or not. We're OK as long as we define it uh, from the same place throughout the entire question. So we're going to say the final height is 0. And the initial height would be, well, 10 meters relative to that final height, zero. Lewis, question? Yep. No, no. Um, because that's a good question, Lewis, but it starts at this point, okay, at rest, falls down, falls down, falls down, falls down, okay, 10 meters down, 10 meters down. We're trying to find the speed, right? Well, that 10 meters is not where it started. Sorry, where it ended. That 10 meters is where it started, right? Now, what you could do, Lewis, and this would be really, really odd, but what you could do is say the initial height was 0 and the final height was negative 10, but that would be really odd to do. It would still work, give you the right answer, but it would be just an odd thing to do. Right? We start 10 meters above where we finish, so we're going to say HI is 10 meters and, and HF is 0. All right. Let's write down that next step. EI is equal to EF here. EI equals EF. Ask yourself those three questions. What's the first question? What's the first question? Okay. Is there any motion? Is it moving? Is it moving when it starts? No, there isn't. So there's no kinetic energy then, right? Lewis, what's the second question? Is there a height? Is there a height? OK, so what does that mean if there's a height? OK, so we plug in MGH. Good. MGH initial. Uh, what's the third question? Ellie, what's the third question? Uh, yeah, and there's not, is there? There's not even a spring or an elastic in this question. So that's it. That's all we have for the initial energy. All right, ask yourself the same three questions for the final energy. Is there a height at the end? No. Is there a spring or an elastic that's stretched or compressed? No. Is there, a, uh, is there motion at the end? Yeah, it's moving. We're trying to find the speed. So it's 1 half MVF squared. Shortcut here. Anybody spot it? What's the shortcut there? Atlanta? You can cancel out the mass. You don't have to. We got the mass here. We don't have to cancel it out, but we can if we want. G is 9.81. The initial height is 10 meters. Um, it becomes VF squared equals 196.2, right? 9.81 times 10 divided by a half. And we're going to square root that. And I think that's going to, I don't have my answer key here, actually, but I think that's going to work out to be about 24 meters per second. Is that right? So we get 14.0, 14.0 meters per second. And we'd round that to three digits. So there we go. Good? Now, the second part of that question is asking for how much time has elapsed. We're not going to use conservation of energy to find the time because nowhere in the equations for conservation of energy does time appear. So we're going to have to do something else. What do you want to do? You got a bunch of options here, a bunch of them. You could say d is equal to vit plus 1 half at squared. You got this, this is 0. You got this, solve for t. You could say A is equal to delta V over delta T, VF minus VI. Got this, got this, solve for delta T. You could say V is equal to VI plus VF over 2 times T. Got this, got this, got this now, solve for delta T. Whole bunch of options to find delta T there, right? Basically, solving for delta T becomes one of those old group B problems that we did second week of physics 20. Right. Brian, question? Yeah. No. Uh, no, you couldn't. Although it does involve time and it does involve energy, Ryan, you can't use that because you don't have anything about power here, right? 
So if you had the pow a power and you had, you know, a, a work here, which I suppose you could make work with the whole MGH, MGHF minus zero or the other way around, then you could solve for time, but we don't know what, we don't know what power is. So um, it's not completely invalid. It's just not helpful to us because we don't know what power is. All right, question number four just asks us to describe some conversions here. We're not really uh, asking, they're not asking us to solve for any numbers or anything here. A javelin is thrown at a speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. A short time, la time later, the javelin comes back down and sticks into the ground. What are the energy conversions that take place? Aiden, question? Okay, question about the last one, quick. How long did it take? I'm not sure what the number actually is there, Aiden. Does anybody have that? 2.03, anybody else? Is that what you have? Okay. How'd you do it, Aiden? It's speed by 9.81. You could do it. You could do it by by fourteen minus zero over nine point eight one. That should work. What'd you get, Stephen? Yeah. Okay. So one. It should be about one point four or something. One point four three. Okay. One point four three. Anybody else have that number? A couple of people. So we're asked again in number four to describe the conversions that take place here when the javelin is thrown up and then comes back down to the ground. Um, what kind of energy does this javelin start with, Bart, as it's being thrown up into the air? It, I'm sorry? No, it doesn't start with gravity. It's on the ground, right? Or basically it's on the ground. So it doesn't have gravitational. It's moving to go up into the air. What kind of energy does it have? Kinetic energy. As it goes up into the air, kinetic is going to decrease, right? Because it's going to slow down. Well, what's that kinetic energy transformed into? Got to be transformed into something because you can't destroy it. It's got to be changed into something, right? And what's it changed into? Good. Gravitational potential energy. So as it goes up into the air, kinetic decreases, potential increases because kinetic is transformed into potential. And then it reaches its maximum height, and then it comes back down. And as it comes back down, your, your gravitational is converted back to kinetic energy. And when it reaches the ground, it's just kinetic energy. Right? That's it. That's all there is to that one. And finally, number five. Five says, uh, a 0.75 kilogram ball is thrown straight up into the air. The ball reaches a max height of 17 meters before it comes back down. What was the initial speed of the ball? A mass, 0 0.750 kilograms. Uh, max height of 17 meters. What do you want to call that? Yep. Uh, Haley just asked if the mass would ever matter in these questions. The mass will never matter unless you're dealing with elastic potential. Then it becomes important. So if you're dealing with just gravity potential and kinetic energy, it will always cancel. But if, as soon as you introduce 1 half kx squared, because mass doesn't appear in that equation, right? Mass won't cancel anymore. Okay. What is, uh, what is that 17 meters? It says the ball reaches a max height of 17 meters before it comes back down. What do we want to call that? Is that going to be an h? Is that going to be a d? What's that going to be? What did you call that? h? hi or hf? HF, that's what I'd call it too. The final height. As it goes up into the air, it starts at a height of zero. It goes up into the air, reaches 17 meters. That's going to be our final height before it comes back down. We're looking for VI. Do you know what VF is? Do we know what the speed is when it reaches that max height? Zero, right? It stops when it reaches its peak height. So let's say VF is equal to zero meters per second. All right. So we're analyzing this ball going up into the air. Ask yourself those three questions. Is it moving when it's released, Tyler? 
Yes. So it's got kinetic energy then when it's released, right? One half mvi squared. All right. Second question, Zach. Does it have a height when it's released? No. So there's no gravitational potential, right? Is there an elastic or a spring that's stretched? No. So there's just kinetic energy, right? When it reaches its maximum height, is it moving, Derek, when it reaches its maximum height? No. So there's no kinetic. Is there a height when it reaches its maximum height? Yes. So there's going to be potential, right? MGH. There's no spring or elastic, so it's just going to be 1 half mv squared is equal to MGH. Haley, can I cancel it to masses? Because it appears in every term, which it always will, okay, uh, as long as you're not using e elastic potential. So we got one half of vi squared equals 9.81 times 17. Let's do this one on the calculator here. Let's say 9.81 times 17. Get the number on the right hand side first. Then let's either divide by a half or multiply by two. And then let's square root that. We end up getting 18.3 meters per second. Good. How many people got that one? Good. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to give you just a couple minutes to see what you can do with question number six yourself, just at your desks, and then we'll definitely take a look at it in probably about three or four minutes, okay? And then we'll give you another example that I'm going to ask you to do at your desks, and then we'll give you your outline for your test. All right, let's take a look at the question now, guys. Uh, question number six says, a spring with a spring constant of 200 newtons per meter is compressed 25 millimeters uh, we don't like that millimeters unit, right? We always want to convert to our standard units, meters, seconds, uh, meters per second, meters per second squared, joules, right? Those standard units. So we'll remember to convert that to meters by dividing by 1,000. We've got a one kilogram object is attached to the end of the spring. What's the maximum speed of the object? Well, let's say that the spring constant for number six is 200 newtons per meter. Let's say the displacement is... 0 0.0250 meters, because that's the way, that's the amount that it's compressed. That's going to be the initial displacement, though, right? Because it's released, its displacement isn't always going to be 25 millimeters. Only when it's only when it's compressed at the beginning of the problem. We got a mass of one kilogram in this question, and we want to find the maximum speed. What speed are we looking for here? V what? V i or V f? VF, good. VI would be zero, right? When it's compressed, it isn't moving. It's just, it's sitting there waiting to be released, right? We talked about that, um, those clothespin guns that I made when we made, me, me and my friends made when we were kids. Okay. When we pulled that elastic back before we released it, it wasn't moving. It was just stretched. It had a displacement, but a speed of zero. So let's say EI is equal to EF. Ask yourself three questions. First question, does it have a height? Does it have a height at the beginning of this problem? No, not as far as we know anyways, right? Maybe it does have a height. Maybe it is off the ground. But if it is, it's staying at the same height. So let's define that as our zero point and say that it has no gravitational potential. Okay, it doesn't really matter as long as it's not changing. So we're going to say that it does not have a height. Therefore, it does not have MGH. Does it have a speed at the beginning of the problem? Is it moving, Brian? Is it moving at the beginning of the problem? We, we, we stretch that or we compress that spring. It's not moving at the beginning of the problem. So no speed, no kinetic energy. Um, does it have a, a spring or an elastic that's stretched or compressed at the beginning of the problem? Seth? Yes, it does. The spring is compressed, right? So it does have elastic potential energy. One half kx squared. At the end of the problem, once you release it, does it have a speed? Is it moving? Yes, Zach says. So it's going to have kinetic energy, right? One half mvf squared. Does it have a height? Does it have height, Aiden? No, it doesn't. So no gravitational potential. Does it have a spring or an elastic that's stretched or compressed after it's released? 
No, it doesn't. Right, good. So it's just this, right? Now, Haley asked a question as she was doing it. Can we cancel out the halves there? What do you think? Can we? Does it appear in every term? Sure it does. So we can cancel out the halves there, but we can't cancel out the mass this time because it doesn't appear in every term. Okay, K is 200 newtons per meter. X is 0 0.0250. Got to square that. M is 1.00 kilograms. And VF is what we're looking for here. So let's do this one on the calculator now. Say, two, is that 2 or 200? 200 times 0 0.025 squared. Let's divide that by 1, which gives me the same value. And then let's square root that. It gives me 0 0.354. meters per second. Good? Easy questions? That was a little bit harder, eh? Just because it was a little bit different. I got one final question for you here. Question looks like this. Here's a roller coaster. The roller coaster is right here moving at 5.0 meters per second. The height of the roller coaster is 40 meters. The height of this spot right here is 15 meters. And the height of this spot right here is uh, 25 meters. I want to find the speed of the roller coaster when it reaches that second hill. Speed of the roller coaster when it reaches that second hill. We can say EI is equal to EF, right? At the beginning of the problem, ask yourself three questions. Zane, is it moving? So it's got kinetic energy, right? Does it have a height? Bart, does it have a height at the beginning? Yes. So it's got gravitational potential. Is there a spring that's compressed or stretched? No. If there was, we just add in 1 half kx squared. Now, this is the tricky part right here, or at least it might seem tricky. EF. Where do I make that? Do I have to say, this is my final? Solve for the, the uh, speed here, and then go initial final for the last part? Or can I just say this is my final right here? If I just say this is my final over here, then what if it didn't go to this 15 meters? What if it went to 20 meters? What if it went to 35 meters high? What if it went to 7.5 meters high? How would that change things? Would it have more speed? Okay, would it have more speed going down the hill? No. It doesn't matter what path it takes to get there, the speed will be exactly the same. Okay, let's think about that. It starts with a certain amount of kinetic energy right here and a certain amount of potential. It's, it's converted to all kinetic down here. And then it goes up to this site, goes up to this site, goes up to this site. The total amount of energy will still be the same as it was. Now, kinetic and potential will be differently distributed, but it'll still be the same total. Comes back down here and back up here, still the same total. So it doesn't matter what it did in the middle here. It doesn't matter. The initial energy is equal to the final energy. Now, the final energy is going to be what? Does it have a height at the end of the problem? Is that the question? I'm sorry. Uh, where did you get five? Oh, I see. Ooh, couldn't it just be, good question. Couldn't it just be five meters per second at the end of the problem? It wouldn't be five, no, because it's gone downhill, right? doesn't matter how it got to this point. Bottom line is it's 15 meters below where it started. If it's 15 meters below where it started, it has less gravitational potential. If it has less potential, it has to have more kinetic. So it's got to be moving faster. Right? 
the only time you could say it's going to be the exact same as what you started with is if it reached the same height again, 40 meters. If it's below that, it's going, it's going faster. If it went to 45 meters, it would be going slower. Let's just finish this off, guys, okay? The final energy is going to be kinetic because, of course, we've got a speed and we've got potential energy there as well. Masses cancel. Again, back to those problems where the masses cancel. We're going to say 1 half of 5 squared plus 9.81 times 40. Was 9.81 times 25. Dave Merkel to the front office, please. Daniel Miller to the front office, please. So we're going to say this is. Let's calculate this here, guys. Let's say 0.5 of 25, because 5 squared is 25. Let's press equals. Then let's add that to use some brackets here 9.81 times 40. Okay, let's take the 9.81 times 25 over by subtracting, because it's not attached to the VF. Brackets, 9.81 times 25. And then we're going to divide that by 0.5 or multiply it by 2. And then we're going to square root that. We should get a speed. Before we press that button, smaller or bigger than 5 meters per second? Smaller or bigger than 5? Bigger than 5? Let's see. Bigger than five it is. Why? Because it's lower down, right? Doesn't matter how it got to that point, it's 15 meters below where it started. So we're going to say VF is 17 or 18 meters per second. Got it? All right. So as you're reviewing for this test on Monday, go back through the unit, go back through your notes. Okay, you should be able to provide yourself with a nice little tidy outline of it, right? What's a force? Newton's first law, Newton's second law, all those multi-force problems like elevators and hills and pulleys and so on. Um, Newton's third law, okay, work, energy, power, conservation of energy. That's it. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll see you on uh, Monday morning.